Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to talk about signing up for the AWS platform. Uh, so just go ahead and open up a web browser and we're going to navigate to aws.amazon.com. In the top right corner you'll see like a sign into the console or continue to sign up or something like that. Um, go ahead and click that. Now if you've signed up for AWS before you should see something like this. If not, you'll see um, a sign-up page, right? Uh, if you do see this, just click the Create New AWS Account. And you'll be brought to this page here. Uh, I'm, I've am i already created an AWS account, so I'm just going to kind of go through a slideshow of how to do it. But basically, you'll want to uh, enter in your email address and password and confirm that password. Uh, make sure that you have access to this email address because that's going to be your root email address and you'll need it for logging into the AWS console. Uh, you can add an AWS account name here, something that's memorable. Um, so just uh, whatever you'd like for your AWS account name. Uh, and then the, the, f the flow will look a little bit something like this. You'll see your uh, create AWS account um, after you put in your email address and password and AWS account name, you click continue and then you'll see the option to either select a personal or a professional account. Um, go ahead and just fill in this basic information, your name, um, phone number, which you will need later on and click create account and continue. After that you'll see a um, a credit debit card number, go ahead and enter that information in the cardholder's name and click Secure Submit. After that, you will need to confirm your identity by entering in a phone number as well as this security check. And when you click Contact Me, Amazon will actually call you and you will see this four digit code here that they've um, presented to you. Just, just enter that in over the phone. And then after it verifies that information, you'll see your identity has been verified successfully and click continue. And then you can select a support plan. I wouldn't worry about any of these. Um, if it's just a, like a personal account, don't worry about that. Just uh, choose the free basic plan. Um, if you do select developer or business plan, you will start um, being billed. It'll accrue from the moment that you essentially click the developer business um, and that can start getting pretty pricey especially if you accidentally hit like the business plan uh, for a hundred dollars a month but after that you will see this um, you'll see this uh, personalize your experience you don't have to do that um, just go back to sign into the console which will bring you back to your um, aws.amazon.com page and that's it uh, so, going forward with any uh, any of the lectures where I say go ahead and sign into the Amazon console, um, I'm talking about this, and you'll want to select root user and then enter in your username. Um, so, it'll just be aws.amazon.com, and then see you'll see complete sign up or something like that. But, yep, and then you'll just go ahead and sign in, and then you can continue continue with the rest of the lectures. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. So go ahead and log into your Amazon Management Console, and we're going to look for S3. S3 is one of Amazon's storage mechanisms for objects in the cloud. If you have some buckets created, you can see there's a list of S3 buckets here. We're going to create a brand new bucket, so if you don't have any, don't worry about it. We'll just go ahead and create one. Now typically when you create a bucket for static website hosting, you want to name the bucket what your domain is named. So I have a Route 53 domain called infotro.io. So that's what I'm going to call my bucket, infotro.io. You can select region if you want. I'm going to leave it as US East 1. We will be configuring a CloudFront distribution to cache the contents of our website so you don't really have to worry about that too much and we're not going to copy settings from an existing bucket down here in the bucket settings for block public access let's untick this 
because our website is going to be publicly accessible. We want that to be publicly accessible and just acknowledge that that will enable the objects within the bucket becoming public. For bucket versioning we won't worry about that. You can enable bucket versioning to essentially create versions of the same object. So if you wanted multiple copies of the same thing and maybe you're working on on a project and you want different versions of like a word document you can do that we're going to disable we're going to leave that disabled and we're not going to worry about tags or default encryption either so after we've got all those settings selected just go ahead and create the bucket and it successfully created a bucket called infotro.io you can see that it exists here now that we've created this bucket, we're going to want to go to properties. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's going to have a section where it says static website hosting. And it's currently disabled. So we're going to edit that. And we're going to enable this for static website hosting. We won't worry about redirects for requests out of an object but we do need to specify essentially the index document and the error document and these are the two base files that you need to supply when you enable static website hosting it's essentially just what the name of your index.html document is and what your error documents um, going to be called so we'll just call that index.html and we're going to call this one 404.html we won't we don't want any redirection rules and we'll just click save changes and if you scroll back down you can see static website hosting is enabled this is the link right here that you will be able to access your website with so just click that little button it'll copy it to your clipboard and then if you paste and go you can see that we have a 403 forbidden access and the reason why is even though we've enabled that bucket to be publicly accessible we still need to provide an access control list for objects within the bucket so let's scroll back up and go to permissions so we have the block all public access turned off but we don't have a bucket policy and bucket policies essentially allow fine-grained control on objects within that bucket. So if you wanted to learn more, you can click Learn More. And you can see here that we have a bucket policy. It's essentially a JSON object that has a version name and ID, and it has a statement similar to IAM policies that will allow actions on objects within the bucket. So we'll go ahead and create our own bucket policy. And you'll just click edit where that bucket policy is. And it's essentially uh, again, just going to be a JSON object. Let's click on policy generator. And then we'll select S3 bucket policy for the bucket policy type. And then we're just going to have an allow rule. And for principle, it's essentially going to be a star. So we want to allow essentially anyone to access anything within that bucket. So let's click, um, let's go ahead and click all actions. And the Amazon resource name is going to be this bucket ARN. So let's copy that, go back over to the policy generator. No conditions or anything like that. And then if we add statement, you can see there's an allow of S3 all objects. Generate that policy, and it looks like this. So go ahead and copy that over and close it. And this is going to be our bucket policy. The ID, this was auto-generated. You can essentially name it whatever you'd like. Same thing with the SID. Um, so it's basically allowing all objects to be accessed. 
Um, actually, let's uh, let's go ahead and make it a little more fine grain control. We don't want S3 anything. Uh, we want S3 get object only. And we'll go ahead and save changes. It's not applied to any resource in a statement. Uh, so here on the resource, we have our ARN. We're going to need to add a star after that because we want not only the bucket to be accessible, but anything after that bucket. So anything essentially in the root of the bucket. And let's go ahead and save those changes. So now we have our bucket policy. We have block all access turned off. So it looks good. Let's just go ahead and go back to the S3 homepage here. And let's try, oh, I must have closed it out. Let's, um, let's just go ahead and try and access that website again. We copy it and we'll just, we'll go here and we try and go. Now we're getting a different error message. Not We're not getting blocked access. We're essentially getting a message saying that they're not able to find this 404.html. It's saying there's no such key. So let's go ahead and just add those two files. We'll need the index and we'll need the HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up Notepad here. And we'll just create um, a basic HTML page. We'll call this one index. We'll save it in documents and then we'll want one for 404 and we're going to save this as that so let's go ahead and upload those index and 404 Don't worry about all this other stuff. It's just going to give you information about the, the destination. If we upload those, you can see that it's succeeded. We have those as objects in our bucket. And now if we go here, refresh that, you can see we have our index page being rendered. And if we go to 404.html, there's our 404 page. And so that's basically it. That's that's how you configure a bucket for static website hosting. If you have time, please join me in the next lecture where we will be creating we'll be purchasing a Route 53 domain. So, we'll see you there.